What is up guys, Speed here, and today I'm bringing you what I think is the best hero, or one of the best heroes of patch 7.23. Nature's Prophet is a menace. The hero's stats have been buffed. His intelligence and agi were buffed recently, and most importantly, player units are no longer blocked by the innate block that melee heroes have, the whatever it is, 8 damage. It doesn't work on, on Treants now, and all of a sudden... Treants went from these units that did like 7 damage less, it would sometimes do like 2 or 3 to high armor heroes if they had a stout shield, to basically pure damage every single auto attack. Very impressive, massive buffs, and the fact that you can teleport to outposts and bounties and, and get all these important objectives as well as snipe couriers, every single courier, <laughs> which I actually don't do that much of this game, but all this utility that teleport brings in this patch, unbelievable. And as a result, I'm going to show you this Nature's Profit game. And guys, it's my best Euro, all right? This is the real pro analysis, all right? I would legitimately consider myself one of the best Nature's Profits in the world, all right? And that's, that's, yes, that's me being cocky, but I have over 300 games of the hero and I feel very comfortable on him. Patch 7.23 has been one of the best patches of all time. I'm not kidding. I actually think this patch is absolutely fantastic. So much so that I've been playing it a lot and learning about the patch. Coming up with new strategies, understanding the new items, the new heroes. It's really been a blast. And as a result, we've made over 36 new pieces of content in the last week. Me, your boy, Speed. Frempo, a top offering player, and Yamson, a top carry player, have been dissecting the patch at length over on the main Game Leap website. We've had hundreds of people sign up in the last week, and they've been all raving about it. So if you're interested in understanding the patch better than everyone else, click the link down below in the description, and I'll see you there. So moving into it, you want to summon Treants right off the bat, literally as <laughs> this all chats. <laughs> this is what I get in all chat, guys. <laughs> But uh, essentially, you want to spawn trains literally as you get into the game. Otherwise, you won't get two sets off because right when this one comes up as well, I spawn them and I start moving out, right? I even did it late, so I'm not going to have two sets of trains for the bounty room fight, which stinks. So make sure you spawn them right away. Now, getting into the laning stage of, of Profit, it's really nothing too complex. You just want to summon trains basically whenever you can. You'll notice that I have four going right now. And if I was to fight them at the bounty room with four, there's no way they would trade. And when you're using trains, you want to just block people. You notice I blocked the bounty hunter in the trees here. And that allows us to get the first blood. So the main utility and the stun that Profit actually provides is purely his ability to actually block people with trains, which I'll be showing you throughout this game here. It's one of my strengths as a Profit player, my ability to on the spot read into a situation where I can block with Treants. Talking about profit trading in lane, the only thing you really need to focus on is putting your Treants on a target that you want to hit, hitting them with a Blightstone, as I do to the IO here, and then backing up, right? You don't want to trade 2v1, really, so you sort of use your Treants to just hit them while you sort of just kite in and out. If they're ignoring you, you just keep auto-attacking them. If they're not, you, you sort of need to kite backwards. That's how you need to look at it. And really, other than that, it's just going to be trading from the side. I also have no problem with standing behind the wave here. I even secure the range creep to guarantee a good laning stage. Really, what I'm trying to do is just harass them and then get denies when the time comes, right? I went for the range creep, didn't get it. But other than that, it's just like, yeah, I'm just going to auto attack you. With no stout shields in the game, Profit just shreds. Like this Blightstone with Tangos, it's so hard to trade with no matter what hero you are. So really just take advantage of that level one. You notice like I also deny creeps. It's important to learn how to do this. I literally kill creeps from a quarter HP. They just insta die. And yeah, that's why this hero is just so cash money as I go for a little bit of a block here. Um, this is just another scenario, you know, where you just got to go for the blocks. Forces the IO tether, which cancels itself. And now you TP back to base. Another strength of the hero. You can bring items to your teammates. And I understand, you know, you have couriers now. So why is this necessary? Those couriers are so snipeable and they take all game. So what you do is you trade all your HP. I trade basically all my HP. Frankly, I wouldn't even care if I died. But I trade all my HP. I buy a TP. And then I TP back in. Now my Luna actually didn't even need it because... <laughs> Courier was getting used, but you TP back in, you summon your trants, and you buy your items. And all of a sudden, it's as if you died and got sent back to base without actually dying. Something I could do to actually optimize efficiency in this lane is send a treant off to go pull. It's something to consider when you're playing profit. You just want to send treants or one treant to actually pull the small camp for you. Or you can do it with your main hero using teleport to get to the camp faster. Uh, this is something you saw No Tail do at TI eight a lot it's something that i've considered ever since i watched that game and his profit play but yeah really nothing insane you sort of just want to hit the same person uh, that your trains are hitting i don't even know what to say it's just like spawn your trains and auto attack over and over again spawn trains auto attack attack move right 
Uh, with the treants, I'm maybe going to go for a block here. I know he's low, so when people are low, I don't man up with the treants. If they're not low, I'll just auto attack them with the treants. But if they are very low, then I, I'll go for the block here, which I do with the treants. And when I'm blocking, I actually just auto attack with my hero. I'm not good enough to actually attack move with both uh, it's very very difficult to do that almost impossible it feels but you, i just auto attack my main hero and then block with the treants unfortunately my luna is too low to help out with the kill but regardless it's a lot of damage personally i'm a big fan of maxing out treants on five profit i think it's the best for pubs by far and it significantly increases the damage you get from them and allows you to actually flash farm which is what i prefer there's some profits who are maxing teleport right now which i get it's good for sniping couriers good for taking outposts it's very logical in that regard but at the same time i like just having the ability to more so focus playing around on on my own farming game which sounds a bit bizarre it's like why would you play profit then but it's actually so good for pubs i i actually don't know what to say it's one of those things where it's like okay you either do what works or you do what the pros do you know what i mean there is a difference between what works in the upper echelon of, of the pro scene and pubs i'm not saying you can't copy pro mechanics like i see people in the comments saying stuff like can you make a replay analysis of the crusader bracket because this immortal replay analysis doesn't help me that's not the case at all please don't look at it like that every single game you can look at it that's better than you and get something out of it you should be copying them but something like maxing teleport for the ability to snipe couriers and get down deep vision which is typically what it's used for is not necessarily certainly that needed it's it's a lot better if you can just farm and get an early level six and really at this point in the game that's all i'll be doing i'm sort of just looking to you know potentially teleport to help out lands but for the most part i'm really not focused on ganking i don't like playing the gank style of profit i don't think it's necessarily that good but you notice i just quickly take a small camp right i have five treants right now which gives me a lot of damage and my luna doesn't currently need help i believe she ends up getting actually ganked uh, which is unfortunate here kind of one of the main downsides of luna but for the most part right like there's no way i save her even from a position so what do i do instead i just go get my level six it it's that simple i'm farming jungle items i get a trust shovel which i'll be using throughout the game i'm not actually that diligent with it but you know it's just one of those things where i get this crazy early level six and all of a sudden i can just have some of the most impact in the game your ultimate is a 60 second cooldown and does like up to i don't know four or five hundred damage approximately with it all you have to do to use profit ulti if you want to kill someone top you click it bottom on the mini map that's all you need to do. Do not click profit ulti on the people you're using it on unless they are like 100 HP or less, right? What you want to do to maximize damage is cast it on your minimap a farthest away from them. Now, in terms of item builds, as I said, I like going this more so core build uh, as you'll see throughout this game as I ult the for this bounty hunter kill, which doesn't need to reach him. But essentially, I really like going this right click build. So I go treads into drums. Right? I think there's a lot of different builds you can go. I buy a lot of stats. I buy a wand. Um, I have a blightstone. I have a fairy fire. You can go builds like Greaves. You can go builds like, you know, this, the, as I said, the early mech. You can go Solar Crest, a four staff, a glimmer, Necromonicon one. It's kind of the beauty of profit. You can buy whatever you think you need for the game if you have that good of analysis. But at a base level, if you need a build to go, I recommend this one where you just buy treads and drums. It gives you a lot of right click damage and the drums for, you know, a nice aura for your team. Coming up, I just want to quickly show an example of when you would actually ulti near someone. So in this situation, the Zeus is getting gone on bottom, and I want to make sure the quick kill as quick as possible. So it's not really an attempt to kill steal. As you see here, I see the Zeus getting gone on, and I know he's low HP, and I don't try to steal the kill. I just didn't want my team to have to overcommit, so I quickly yoink it so that they can get out, right? That, that's really the main intent there. Uh, but other than that, I'm basically going to be ulting from the opposite side of the map. You notice I also don't want to TP in and kill myself. I see my team getting, like, you know, killed at this tier 2, but I don't TP in to help them. Instead, what I do is I look for this courier snipe, which is useful, obviously, with the treads attack speed. It's no problem at all. And then I farm the nearby camp, right? The Zeus ends up TPing in, and this is some shenanigans uh, going on here. <laughs> obviously, they end up TPing to try to kill me. <laughs> I don't know what was going on with me and him. I go for some tree and body blocks, uh, but unfortunately the Magnus comes in and <laughs> he whiffs RP. Easy edgy treads, easy edgy treads. But unfortunately my TP gets canceled, but it doesn't matter. Your boy picks up the Zeus kill and we get the ulti off. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where the main thing I'm really trying to do on Profit at this point in the game is take camps whenever I can, snipe couriers, and create chaos with my ulti. Uh, and that's exactly what I do here, right? I farmed a camp, I sniped a courier, I even got a Zeus kill by just auto-attacking him to death. I hit him with the question mark because that is what we call 
space my boys that is what we call spice but yeah when i'm respawning i'm really just looking for you know lanes to farm my veno gets gone on i'm like okay you know bottom's being pushed in i don't know what to do right do i walk around no do i sit around no do i look for another kill no i go kill a camp i'm trying to make this clear to you you can do this on any support or any core now it's particularly good in profit because your hero is good at farming camps but you can do this on any hero find the open wave find open camps if the game is really static my team isn't making plays right now right we have a luna who's under farmed and a dk who didn't have a good laning stage and as a result we are chilling i'm snowballing i killed two camps and i'm waiting for things to happen now eventually you know my team makes a play to go on the top here and all of a sudden after i you know I put a little bit of pressure bottom by just kind of showing myself there i'm able to tp in top i use treants to push in mid and we go on the io right just some easy money play as the joke gets bashed <laughs> and we get the kill so really, it's, it's kind of this simple. Don't always look to set up kills as profit, right? It does not work. You have to just sometimes slow down and kill some creep camps, you know? Fight breaks down. What do I do, guys? What do I do? My team it doesn't want to farm top. I don't know why. I have no clue why. Doesn't matter. My brain is so farm-oriented, you guys don't even understand. But it is what allowed me to get to top 50 at some point. You have to understand, it's my ability to see waves. I think it's my biggest strength as a player that a lot of players lack. It really helps me on profit, right? I, I'm pushing in top wave. I'm like, okay, maybe I can look for a gank bottom here or, you know, help out with this team fight. I TP in and I throw out some auto attacks. Nothing insane, but you do quite a bit of right-click damage, right? I have high attack speed. I can provide my drum Zora if I feel like there's a kill we need to get. And that's exactly what happens here. We get gone on. I should have popped my drums a bit earlier. I do end up popping them here anyway, which allows us to quickly kill this IO due to the attack speed buff. And look, I have so many stats that this jug takes forever to kill me. And I'm able to sprout, get some treants off, and sure I end up dying, but I can even go for some body blocks a little bit later on here with the treants onto the Magnus, which is what we're going to go for. And we end up picking up another two kills right guys this is the power of the stats you push in lanes you get really farmed i take my damage talent at level 10 and you just tp in an auto attack and cast your ultimate that's all you have to do and i know it might sound like oh this is just so simple it is but hopefully you kind of see the point it's just like play for efficiency and then show up to engagements it's kind of that simple when you push in waves you actually create better engagements as well right just by me pushing in top here i'm going to kind of show you the result bounty hunter starts shifting top which i actually wish i saw because i think i end up dying to him here which is pretty embarrassing oh wait no that was a replay bug there's no way we would have seen him but really i forced them all top here and all of a sudden like the bottom side of the map in mid is shovable i'm not saying i should have died that's a bad play by me and bad awareness i even remember when i tp top i felt pretty bad about it i'm like uh, there's a high chance i'm gonna get ganked just from intuition but i i died anyway then as a result we basically take bottom tier two i'm not once again i'm not saying my death was good all i'm saying is you can push in lanes deep and use treants to push them in if you feel like you're gonna die when you're split pushing only use your ultimate and treants to split push and get into the jungle right that is kind of how you want to look at this hero but you do want to shove waves and create map pressure as far as away as possible from your cores do not and i repeat do not shove in the wave that your core is nearby if your core is jungling bottom do not go shove bottom. You're griefing them. The wave will push into them. Let them farm it. Go spawn treants top. If their enemy team is pushing top tier two, you can even TP behind them and cut the wave. Be creative, but do not grief, you know, your core's farm. I'm just going to show you raw talent here. This is what we call raw talent. I see them coming in mid. I'm like, all right, man. You think you're taking a break? All right. You think you're taking a break? I say... No, I sprout him up. I know he has a Quelling Blade, but it still kind of buys a little bit of time. He's committing for the tier 1 for some reason. Didn't have any spin, so that was a bad idea. Let me just give him the straight up beat town. Bang, 68 damage, 68 damage, 71 damage, 70 damage, 70 damage, 71 damage. I mean, we're just popping off and we pick up the kill, but I actually did a lot of damage. I did like 500 damage. You do a lot of damage. You buy right click items and you do a lot of damage. Your hero naturally has really good agility, actually very good intelligence, and you just right click. Now, if we look at the net worth in the game, I mean, your boy, he's uh, he, he's number five. It's pretty good. I'm sorry. He's number six. <laughs> and now at this point, also in the mid game, when your team wants to make plays, it's good to TP for deep vision. They ended up having a sentry for this ward, which is, uh, you know, sad. But really, it's good to do this, where you sort of just TP around and get down deep vision. I knew my team wanted to gank top and play top. So essentially what I told them is, okay, I will ward top. Even if you don't know where your team wants to play, just get down deep vision and tell them to go to it. 
or even if they don't go to it, you can just farm around it. And that's exactly what happens here. Look, we take a good fight, and then you'll see what I do in the fight. All I'm looking to do is stay on the outside and auto attack. So I come in here, come in from the side. I'm using this deep vision that allows me to scout out the Zeus. Vision is key in fights. Prophet's really good at that because you get it down deep and you really scout out the entire fight with these great hill wards. And look, look at me outplay this guy. I'm actually so good. Look at me. Guys, can you believe how talented I am? I mean, I just completely outplay the Zeus. Wow. Wow. But do you see how high impact that is? Even though it seems brutally basic, just me just auto attacking a Zeus and finding him in the back line because I had a good ward is game changing. Like, the basic plays are game changing because a player with bad analysis of Dota would look at that and be like, what did he even do? I could do that. Yeah, I mean, you could technically do that. But would you have done it is the correct question. That's a big thing on profit. It's like you can do most of the things I'm doing, quote unquote, mechanically. It's just, are you doing them? This hero is a lot of really hard decision making, which is why I think he's a great hero to learn if you really want to put in the time. It teaches you a lot about map pressure and, and movement in general. And finally, I'm going to be showing you just a couple more clips, guys. Hang in there. Hang in there. I love this hero and I really love bringing him to you guys. But look, fight breaks down top. We thought we couldn't really push that much. What do I do? I am the greediest person you will ever meet. But it's how I win MMR. It works. And it's not even like it's grieving my team. They're going to get take the top tier, tier one anyway. All I'm doing is now pushing in bottom, which is going to create, you know, more vision for us bottom as the wave will go in deep, which can allow us to charge someone later on, right? Th there's really multiple layers to why this is fine for me to do. It also just gets me items. Like, I just want another item as I miss the last hit, but I just want items. It's one of those things where like, yeah, I could push with my team or I can split up the map. You know what I mean? I, I, I like splitting up the map. My team takes another fight. They're doing fine because the enemy team has heroes that are dead. So it's more so just a pick off. And I'm getting so many items. I'm so farmed. Like, look at my net worth now. I'm above the jug. I'm higher than jug. <laughs> and it's not like I don't show up to fights. This is frankly the beauty of profit. Now I can TP in here. Unfortunately, I do end up dying. So this is a pretty bad TP. Unfortunately, you can't TP against Magnus. Oh, wait, no, I do get out. <laughs> but it's like you can basically push in waves and then show up late. It's really, really convenient and great for solo queue. Oh, this is so insane. All right, guys, you have to see this. This is the best thing of all time. Oh, my gosh. This is... Oh, baby. So the Veno ulties them, right? Great Veno ulti on the two. And they're dropping low. You know what I mean? Like, they're dropping low. They're like, oh, boys, we got to get out. We got to get out. But they're dropping real low. Magnus gets a little bit greedy, though. Right? They get a little bit greedy. In addition, they, they, they kind of chase me a little bit. They're like, oh, we got to go get the kills. But you notice, just based on my player uh, perspective, where's my mouse right now? Sorry, I got to move it back a little bit. Where's my mouse right now? I'm casting my ulti. I'm clicking on my Veno to see, kind of see what's going on. Where's my mouse? Ready? Ulti coming up in two, one. I'm like, okay, I got my ulti now. I dust up the bounty. I click bottom to ulti, right? Bottom right side. It starts bouncing. It's bouncing. Let's follow the ulti. Let's follow the ulti. Doo -doo. Hits the carts. Hits the wave. I believe it hits Zeus. Hits the Zeus. Then goes to mid wave. Hits three mid. And you'll see exactly what happens when it reaches bottom lane. Oh, it creates a real show. <laughs> I believe it hits the Magnus first. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Triple kill. Oh, that was awesome. I, I just love this clip. Wait, can I zoom out? Look at this massacre, guys. This is, this is the great map. Oh, jeez, I'm walking over the cliff. This is the Boston Massacre. Colored version. We ulti. It's coming in. Boom, boom, doof, doof. <laughs> oh. oh, that was great. Oh, God. <laughs> and then you hit him with <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. But that's going to end the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I do end up actually ending this game with... I believe higher net worth than my DK. Yeah, I'm number four on the list. Almost the same net worth as my offlaner. Almost the highest in the game, frankly. Uh, and I'm the position five. I'm buying sentries. I think, I, I mean, I buy a ton of sentries this game. Frankly, I think I would have been the highest net worth if I didn't have to buy supporting items. 13 sentries, a dust. Didn't buy any smokes, which is low skill of me, but uh, it's a pub and we didn't want to smoke. That's not a good reason, but <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, episode of nature's profit this is such a fun hero to play if you're looking for like a hero that just takes a long time to develop but has high payoff i highly recommend profit do understand though i had a 35 percent win rate when i first started playing this hero something of that sort might have maybe it was 40 but it was hella low it took me so long to play him um, i got inspired by bulldog to play him around the ti3 era and ever since then i've been just trying to improve on the hero and you notice now we hit him with the fat 
brow TP, which actually get us killed. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please don't like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Uh, if you want to see more Nature's Prophet content, let me know in the comment section down below as well. Because I love this hero. I love talking about this hero. I just don't talk about him that much because it's like not that popular type of thing. But I don't know. Love him. Great hero. Hey, thanks everyone for watching the video, but before you leave, I just want to mention once again, we've made 36 new pieces of content in the last week. It's insane. Like, we're literally pumping out more and more every single day. Just extremely consistent, amazing content that we are making just for you guys so that you can excel in 7.23. So check it out, and I'll see you there.